everybody. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Emily. I am an Ayurvedic health counselor. I'm also a yoga, meditation, and breathwork teacher, and I am a lover of aromatherapy. So last year, I recorded a video about my favorite tarot and oracle decks, and I've been thinking about doing the same with yoga books uh, for a while because I have a ton of yoga books, and I love books in general, and I love yoga books in particular. And so I wanted to kind of share a little bit about my favorite ones. Um, I have six right now, and I'm going to go through them and tell you why I love them and why I think they are great um, additions to a yoga library. So some of them, I have two, I have four about yoga per se, and then I have two about the yoga sutras, which I'm going to talk about towards the end. And what I want to say about these is that you definitely want these in your library if you're a yoga teacher. These are really just fabulous and, to me, foundational books. And um, if you are not a yoga teacher, and if you are, you, you, all you need is to be a yoga enthusiast, right? And to be um, on your own personal journey where you want to know more about yoga, not just the asana part, but the philosophy part as well and the whole spiritual tradition around yoga. So some of them might be a little trickier to access if you don't have that anatomy foundation, if you haven't done teacher training, but um, you know, the, the other, I mean, go for it, you know, do, do what works for you and the other ones are definitely accessible. Um, the first one I wanna start with is the Bible of the yoga teacher basically, which is the heart of yoga um, by Desikachar. And if you're not a yoga teacher, this is still something you want to get because this book is, um, it's, the, uh, it's under, the subtitle is Developing a Personal Practice. And so this book is about the roots of yoga and what, why we practice yoga, how we practice yoga, um, and really the, the, phil the philosophy, the ph philosophical, that's hard to say, philosophical, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, aspect of yoga. There's a lot of information about asana and the practice itself, but there's also a lot about how yoga came to be and why it became so influential and why it's a transformational practice. What makes it a transformational practice? The tools that it uses and how to use these tools. So mine is, is very much um, annotated, you know, I use um, colored pencils to highlight my books, but I have a lot of things written down, I have my notes, and um, to give you an idea about the table of content, part one is the practice of yoga, and so it, you know, the, the subchapters are the foundation of a yoga practice, the principle of asana, the construction of a yoga practice, uh, pranayam, the bandhas. So it gives you this kind of foundational knowledge. And then part two is a little bit more spiritual because it tells you about the philosophy of yoga. So the qualities of the mind, the paths of yoga, the obstacles on the yoga way, the um, living in the world, the things that darken the heart. And then part three is all about the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, which we're going to talk about more when I get to these books. So this is just a lovely, lovely, important book to have in your library. If you don't have it already, I highly recommend that you get it. Let me tell you about Yoga of the Subtle Body by T.S. Little, who is, which is um, just a fabulous book. Fabulous, fabulous book. Again, if you're a yoga teacher, you want this book. If you're a yoga enthusiast, you want this book as well. It's going to be so good. So the Yoga of the Subtle Body, the title says it all. It's all about the energetic qualities of yoga and of our yoga practice. And it follows, as you can see, it follows the chakras, the chakra system. So there are um, seven chapters. If I'm not mistaken, and you start from um, eight chapters. There's one more because it he talks about the diaphragm as well. So um, you start from the ground up. That's literally the title of chapter one, and then you go all the way to the crown jewel, to the last chakra. And what I love most about this book is that I think it's the perfect condition, uh, um, combination of 
some anatomy and then a spiritual and um, a philosophical aspect to it. And the writing is just absolutely exceptional. This is one of the books that, you know, I can have at night in bed and it's just such a delight to read. It is easy to read, it's accessible, but it's there's so much depth there. And it's also, what's really cool about this is that it's the kind of book that you don't have to read cover to cover. You can go to the chakra that you feel most interested in, that you want to explore, and then just explore that. Um, and that's actually what I've done with this book. I realize now that I didn't read the whole thing yet. Um, I need to go back to it. I got it a few years ago. I want to show you a few images of um, in, inside. You know, you, you have, I mean, look at this image. This is just fabulous. Um, so this is secretly one of my favorite books ever that I would never part with and that I regularly, you know, I dive into it. I let it digest, I go back, let it digest. And um, I haven't picked it up in a while and now I'm really excited because it's back out and so I'm gonna keep it out. I'm not gonna put it back in my library. This one, so this one, if you're not a yoga teacher, is gonna be less accessible for you, that's for sure. This is a very dense book and it's about um, anatomy and functional anatomy. So Bernie Clark is one of the really important teachers in yin yoga and he is just an anatomy expert um, this is one book that is part of a trilogy of a, of a three-part series you have the first one was your body your yoga and i believe it has it is focused more on legs and pelvis this one is focused on the spine and then there's a third one that was released not too long ago that is your upper body your yoga and that is focused more on chest and um, upper limbs and if you're a yoga teacher and if you're and or if you're interested in anatomy, I got I went to this book also because I was having um, a lot of, you know, pain issues. It's just so good. It is so interesting. It's fascinating. Um, but again, it's it's just a very, very dense, more of a, a theory book, um, a reference book that you're going to go back to. You know, you need you need a little bit of a background or a knowledge of anatomy to get into this book. But it's it's just so fascinating because it also gives us a really important foundation in um, functional anatomy for yoga practice and debunking all the myths that we hear about what a safe yoga practice is or isn't. And so this one is focused on the spine, especially, and it's just it's fabulous. The language of yin, the language of yin is absolutely lovely. Gabriel Harris is um, such a wonderful writer. The way that she combines information and makes it concise and clear and accessible is delightful. And this is also a really beautiful book inside. It doesn't have uh, any colored photographs, but it has these little drawing, drawings of sequences. So this is specifically about yin yoga. And if you don't know anything about yin yoga, I'm so excited for you because there's so yin yoga is just fabulous. Um, yin yoga is a passive stretching form of yoga where we do not use muscles and we disengage muscles completely. It's a practice that we do usually um, on cold muscles before vinyasa practice or separate from a vinyasa practice or any other Kind of flowy practice because we don't want to use muscles we don't want muscles to be warm because what we're looking for is to access fascia and to access tendons and ligaments in a way that is nourishing and um, that is juicy without bringing us to harm right without injuring us and so yin yoga it's it is its own practice it's very specific um, it has very specific characteristics Gabriel Harris tells you a little bit about the history and the foundation of yin yoga in the beginning. And then she moves through various sequences that have to do with themes, basically. And I find this book just fabulous. It's, if you're a teacher, first of all, you get your sequences ready in there. 
and or you could you know tweet them and make them yours and if you're not a yoga teacher this is a great way to then have a practice at home that is ready for you you know if you don't know how to sequence a practice it's going to be it's going to be really really nice and so you have different chapters that are different themes um, you have um, you have sequences on the eight limbs of yoga, sequences that have more of an Ayurvedic focus. You have sequences that are um, um, inspired by the deities, and it's just it's just really lovely. And what I like also about this practice is that before you have the little sequence that she offers you, there's inspiration. So there's something that you can read, there's a quote, and then there's a little text of inspiration um, that you can bring into your practice so that it's not just a physical practice, it's a, it's a holistic practice. It includes the mind, it includes the body. And if you're a yoga teacher, this is something also that you can use as inspiration for your classes. It, you know, on the days where you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't feel very inspired, this would be really, really lovely. And... Um, it's just such a such a wonderful book. So this is the language of yin, yoga theme sequences and inspiration to bring your class to life and life to your class. And it's just fabulous. It's a really, really good book. Okay, so we got our four kind of asana focused books. And I wanted to offer you two options if you're interested in um, exploring the yoga sutras. And the reason why I am bringing these two books and I'm going to tell you about them is that I could never relate to the traditional translation of the Yoga Sutras. You know, I studied them in my yoga teacher training. I studied them on my own and I just couldn't connect with them. They felt just very inaccessible. They didn't feel that inspiring. And I never found this kind of connection to the Yoga Sutras because the translators just, it, I just didn't have that appeal. And I found The Secret Power of Yoga, which is by Nishala Joy Devi. And it's a female interpretation. It's a more feminine, a, a different interpretation of the Yoga Sutras. And this, it was just right away love at first sight. Um, I definitely connected with it. And what, um, how do I say this clearly? Usually, and she specifically talks about this and her approach to translation, the sutras are in Sanskrit, right? So when they're translated, they're translated in a very specific way. She's not straying away from the translation, but she's at, she has opted for a translation that rather than focus on, the, on, on a sentence that is negative and lacking, she is bringing the positive and the abundance in the sentence. And so... It's her translations, they're, they vary a little bit from what you're used to, right? You know the sutras, you know their translation, or there, there's a more traditional translation that everybody knows. And her translation is slightly different because she's bringing a more feminine touch to it. So she goes sutra by sutra, right? So she'll have the sutra at the top, and then there's a commentary on it. There's her translation. And what I love about it, too, is that she usually relates it to a life experience that she's had with herself or with people around her. And so this was the first time that I could actually relate to the Yoga Sutras and I could actually see how to implement them in my life. So highly recommend. This is really lovely. I would say it's kind of like uh, T.S. Little's book. It's not something you're going to read cover to cover. It's something that you're going to get little you know, little pieces of goodness too, little nuggets of wisdom here and there when you need it. You could also start your day with reading one at a time. It would be a really nice way to be inspired. But I love this guy. I love it so much. And then the other inspiration um, for the Yoga Sutra is from Melissa Townsend, who is an artist. And this is just completely different. Because look at this. This is her offering about the Yoga Sutras. I mean, if this isn't unique, I don't know what is. So it's a visual representation of the Sutras. And this one is book two, but she has book one as well. And mine, I'm lucky. It's like, it's signed. I love it so much. 
Um, and she goes same thing, sutra by sutra, and she explains her process in the introduction, which is just fascinating. And she was um, she channeled her own interpretation of the sutra. And again, if you read her process, it's just mind blowing. Every piece is just, let me show you a few more, it's just fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. And then same thing, you have a translation, you have a commentary here, you have just the kind of regular translation of the sutra, and then that's her commentary. Um, this is such a beautiful book. I need to order the book one, and I know she has cards as well, so this is something that might be like really um it's super approachable you know i feel that you can get a sense a better sense of the sutras maybe with this approach than just reading a pretty dry text that is otherwise might be a little tricky to access <gasps> this book is so beautiful so here we go these are my favorite yoga book or yoga related books. I hope that um, you find some inspiration. I'm going to put the links below. I have no affiliation, but just so that you um, can reference them. And I would love to know, you know, which ones you already have, which one you plan on getting, which one you feel inspired to, and share your favorite too in the comments below. I have a ton, but I'm always buying new books. So if you have your favorite books, go ahead and share them with me. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a great day.